Okay, today's lesson is all about multiplying and dividing integers. So you are going to need to write that at the top of your notes. Of course, you're going to need your spiral notebook. And if you have a number line that you would like to use, you're welcome to pull that out. Um, if you don't have a number line and you want to draw one in your notes, you can do that. Or you can just go along with the examples as we, as we move along. So it's up to you. That is an optional item. Once you have your title, go ahead and write down these vocabulary words. You should be familiar with them just to make sure product means the answer to any kind of multiplication problem and quotient means the answer to a division problem. We are going to be studying multiplying and dividing integers in this lesson. All right. Once you have that title, let's talk about modeling of multiplication. Modeling of multiplication. And remember, there are several different symbols for multiplication, aren't there? I've got a, um, an X here. We also can use a dot. We also can have a blank space. This is the only operation that you don't have to have any symbol at all. It could be just simply 2 times A can be written as 2A. So keep in mind those different symbols. I have a basic number line here. I'm going to talk about what would that look like if I drew a picture of it. If you had 3 times 2, just a basic multiplication problem. Now you know multiplication is the same as repeated addition. So if you were going to draw a picture of 3 times 2, you want to think of it kind of like that a repeated addition. So here we have 3 times 2. We have 3 and we're going to do that 2 times. Repeated addition means this would be 3 plus 3. Right? So we would show that by going from 0, going to the 3, and then doing another one of those groups. So that would give you 6. You know 3 times 2 is 6, but that's how you would show it with modeling. Here, negative 3 times 2, what would that look like? Well, let me erase this here so we don't get confused. That would be a negative 3 plus another negative 3 if we changed it into repeated addition. So how would you put that on your number line? You'd start at 0 and move to negative 3, and then move another negative 3 spaces. So where would you land? At negative 2. And then finally, if you're looking at two numbers, one is positive and one is negative, I would read this as, notice the changing, the flipping, three groups of negative 2. Three groups of negative 2. So if we start here, we go to negative 2, and then another negative 2. Now I want you to remember this is two groups of three, this is three groups of two. Here, this told me the number of groups, this told me the number of groups, and in this one I switched it, didn't I? Here I said this is the number of groups. Do you remember the property? That means we can switch the order in a multiplication problem and it doesn't change the answer. Three times negative two is the same as negative two times 3. Do you remember the, the property? It is the commutative property. You can change the order of a multiplication problem and it doesn't change your answer. Alright, here are the rules for multiplying. If you need to pause the video you can to copy those down. If you have two numbers and the signs are the same, your answer is always going to be positive. If you have two numbers where the answers are different, then your answer is going to be negative. So a positive times a positive is positive, and the same goes along with division. Positive divided by positive is positive. Here's where some students get mixed up and confused. I'm going to put a little red box around there so you can really zero in on that. A negative divided by a negative is a positive answer. And the same thing would go for multiplying. If you had a negative times a negative, you also get a positive answer. Different signs. It does not matter which one comes first and it doesn't matter whether you're multiplying or dividing. If the signs are different, your answer will be negative. We're going to be doing a lot of practice problems with that concept. You just have to remember if the signs are the same, it's positive. If the signs are different, it's negative. Of course, the numbers, you go ahead and multiply and divide just like you normally would. Go ahead and pause the video and try some practice problems on your own, remembering those two basic rules. Same signs positive, different signs negative. Okay? Go ahead and pause the video and work through these problems and give these a try. These are a bit of a challenge. They're going to make you think about those rules a little bit more in depth. And then come on back and we'll go over the answers. Alright, let's see how you did. Here you have 4 times 8. 
Well, 4 times 8 is 32. You deal with the numbers the same you always would. Now, take that answer and now let's look at the signs. The signs are different, so our answer is negative. So you've got negative 32. All right, look at this one. 3 times 4. Well, 3 times 4 is 12. Signs are different, so our answer is negative. 12 divided by 3. Notice I'm just ignoring the symbol. That really doesn't matter until the end. 12 divided by 3. The signs are the same, so your answer is positive. All right, let's look at this next one. These are a little bit more challenging. Did you work them in pieces? You want to start with doing 4 times 8, which is 32, and the signs are different. Now you deal with that negative 2. Remember, there's no symbol. That still means to multiply. So 32 times 2. The signs are now the same, so my answer is positive. I hope you work that one through one piece at a time. Same thing goes for this one. If you need to pause the video real quick and change your answer, do so. Otherwise, I'm going to go over that. 6 times 3 is 18. I'm doing this first. The signs are different, so it's negative. And now I'm going to take that answer and multiply it by the 5. 18 times 5 is 90. And the signs are different, so it's negative. Okay? And now this last one, 120 divided by 12 is 10. And the signs are different, so it's negative. So you want to keep repeating that to yourself over and over again. Same signs positive, different signs negative. It does not matter whether you're multiplying or dividing. Let's take a look at these. These are a little bit more challenging. Notice my number line here. And this was part of the pre-assessment, wasn't it? We have 0, 1, negative 1, and we've got all these different values in between. All right. Well, look at the A. A would be about a quarter, isn't it? But more importantly, A is positive. B is also positive. If you multiply a positive number times a positive number, you'll get a positive answer, right? And if we have a number bigger than zero times another number that's bigger than zero, we'll get a number that's bigger than zero. How about D times A? D is a negative number. A is a positive number. What happens when you multiply a negative times a positive? You get a negative answer. So, is a negative answer going to be smaller or bigger or equal to zero? Smaller, right? All right. If you didn't really understand the questions and you want to try this one on your own, pause your video before I answer this question and then come on back. Otherwise, let's go ahead and take a look at it. F is a negative, and we're going to multiply it by another negative. A negative times a negative is positive. So our answer is going to be positive. Does that mean it's greater than, less than, or equal to zero? You see how you don't really need the numbers? You don't have to deal with the fractions. Of course, we could have go ahead and placed a fraction value next to each one of those and work them through. But really, the positive and negative rules with multiplying integers are what's really important here that can help you solve this without going through the trouble of putting in the fractions. We're going to do some more practice problems with multiplying and dividing in class. I'll see you soon.